Super. Well, I will go ahead and um, get started. Good afternoon to everyone. I am Cynthia Randazzo, and I'm the president and CEO of the Research Foundation. And it's um, my pleasure to welcome all of you to our grant information meeting um, this afternoon. Uh, thank you for being with us. We certainly understand that um, you that time is limited um, and an important resource. So we will try to keep us all on schedule. We are asking if you have questions um, throughout um, our presentation, if you can just go ahead and put those in the chat. Um, as soon as um, all three presentations are done, we will go ahead and answer um, those, those questions. So our main objective today is to talk just a little bit about the Research Foundation and to go over the community grants program uh, overview, which is our uh, focus areas, eligibility, um, talk about the award process, and, and then of course dates. Uh, we're gonna do an online application tour. We know some of you, um, quite a few of you are new um, to our community grants program. So we wanna do an online application tour. And then of course, um, we wanna make sure we have enough time um, for questions and to offer um, any clarification that, that you might have. Um, so first, I just wanted to briefly talk a little bit about um, who is um, the Research Foundation. And so um, certainly our journey began back in um, 1965, and we were formed as a hospital-based foundation. And our role was to raise funds for research hospital. And for nearly 40 years, um, that's actually um, what we did. Um, we provided support to Research Medical Center to really bring the latest technology and equipment and um, a variety of um, services to Research Medical Center and the communities um, it served. Um, in 2003, um, HCA purchased Research Medical Center and quite a few other hospitals in the Kansas City metro area. And at that time, our foundation um, became an independent 501c3 organization. And we um, invested um, unrestricted funds and continued to um, manage and operate a lot of our um, previous programs and um, but did invest those dollars and those dollars grew. And today um, we've remained committed to a lot of our um, existing programs that we've supported the last 20 years. Um, but we last year unveiled a community grants program um, and this is our second year. Um, last year we uh, provided a little over a million dollars to 31 uh, nonprofit organizations and um, our average award was nearly 34,000. Um, I'm certainly uh, wanna just visit a little bit about just kind of our vision and mission. Certainly our overall goal from our organization is partnering for um, a healthy community. And our current programs focus on um, that vision. Um, we have a, a lot of programs right now um, that invest in um, partnerships that benefit healthcare students um, and healthcare professionals. Um, also um, patients, we have a variety of patient programs. And then certainly we have a, a pretty large injury prevention program that's school-based um, for, for youth. And so those are our four um, health-centered areas that we focus on, but certainly um, we believe through the expansion of our community grants um, program, um, we're, we are meeting um, our vision and we have those resources available. And so we are certainly happy that you are here today to learn a little bit more um, about our community grants program. And I'm going to go ahead and just remind everyone, if you can put in chats any questions that you might have as we are presenting, we'll answer those um, at the end of our program. And want to um, introduce Kate Heinen. She is our Director of Community Grants, and she's going to go over um, our focus areas. She's going to talk about eligibility and the process on how to apply for these funds. So again, thank you for being with us. Yes, thank you, Cynthia. Um, yeah, so as Cynthia said, I'm the Director of Community Grants. So I'll be going over the Community Grants Program. I'm also going to be your contact person for if you have any questions that come up around the application process as we move forward, or if you need clarity around anything that we talk about today, I want you to feel more than free 
to reach out to me and I'll do my best to assist you. So moving into our focus areas, uh, we have three. And for those who uh, were part of our process last year, you might recognize these. Um, we have defined them. And so that handout that Megan included in the chat includes some specific definitions of what we mean by each focus area. And then also how we funded this focus area last year, um, providing some examples of what we mean by this focus area. Um, this information is also going to be in the application. We have put it in there so that as you move into the application, you'll be able to see it. So the first focus area, and these were derived last year after um, a lot of extensive research that the Research Foundation did in evaluating community health needs and identifying priority areas. Um, we want to expand access to care. So we support nonprofit organizations and programs that expand access to healthcare among underserved populations. So we really want to support the work of community programs, nonprofits that are providing direct access to care, removing barriers to care, um, addressing physical health, dental health, and behavioral health. So preferred program will expand access to care consistently, not limited to isolated events such as a health fair. Uh, so this can include like clinics or other, um, other settings in which we're providing direct care to patients. And then our next focus area is promoting health equity. And something that we found when we launched last year is that there's a lot of definitions of health equity. And so to, uh, to narrow it down and better define what we mean, uh, we went with the CDC's definition, which is that health equity is the state in which everyone has a fair and just opportunity to attain their highest level of health. Um, so we want to support nonprofit programs that are focused on addressing systemic barriers, bridging service gaps that come up, um, investing in the health of disinvested people and those who've been made more vulnerable to health disparities due to systemic oppression. Um, and then the last focus area that we have, and these aren't in order of preference, they're just our three focus areas, is healthcare career pathways. Um, we're, uh, even though S and Thea explains we're not part of a research hospital that's owned by HCA, we're in the hospital though, like our office is in the hospital and we are certainly uh, guided through our board and advisory directors and just our relationships in the community by a lot of healthcare professionals. And so we hear about and we witness the healthcare shortage that's happening all the time in our community. And we really um, feel strongly about addressing that. So we want to invest in programming, which engages young people in pursuing training careers in healthcare. Um, the programs which demonstrate a commitment to promoting a diverse workforce in healthcare will have special consideration. Um, so these are programs that engage students in health sciences uh, specifically for providing care. And so nurses, allied health professionals, physicians. Those are our three funding focus areas. And then we have our eligibility. Um, so to be eligible for a grant award, organizations need to be a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Not having a uh, pending 501c3 status and not having a fiscal agent, it needs to be uh, with the organization. And then we need to primarily uh, serve Jackson County, Missouri, with an emphasis on urban Kansas City. Um, and when we say primarily, we of course mean more than 50% of those serve our residents of Jackson County. Um, and so there's, uh, there's those main eligibility criteria. And then we also, of course, have the focus area alignment, which I just went over the focus areas. And the focus area can be your organization fits you know, into one of those focus areas, or maybe your organization uh, doesn't necessarily so much, but the program for which you're applying funding uh, is in alignment with one of those focus areas. That's really what's gonna make you eligible for funding consideration and to apply. And then we'll move into our award details. Okay, so similar to last year, we have $1.7 million available um, our average grant size is 25,000 to 50,000 for an annual award. 
Um, we do encourage organizations to ask for what they need, even if it falls below or exceeds this range. We just want to be really transparent with the understanding that that's going to be our average grant size. Um, and then organizations whose missions and overall activities, so like more than half of your activities are in alignment with the focus area and meet eligibility criteria, can request general operating support. Um, and then, uh, of course, when I said this, period, this grant will be awarded for one year, it's for the 2025 year. And I'll go over a timeline here next, or in just a few, in just a couple of slides, we'll go over the timeline for the award. I want to share some program updates because even though for those who attended last year, a lot of this might sound really similar, we did have some changes to the program. And I want to be uh, really clear about what those are. So one of the changes that you might notice in our grants program is that last year, although our funding focus areas were the same, uh, we didn't have applicants choose one. So there were many applicants who chose, you know, two or even all three of our funding focus areas. Um, and this year, we would really prefer that organizations who are applying choose one focus area which best matches your program. And so that's why we have these definitions, um, which are, like I mentioned earlier, are going to be available on the application. They're also in the handout. Um, it's also something that you can call me about if you just are like, I'm not sure if my program is expanding access to care or health equity. Can you kind of help me see, you know, based on your definitions, which one fits. And I'm happy to do that. Um, so just choose one focus area. The application this year actually won't let you choose multiple. So get really clear on which focus area you're gonna choose from. Um, another update to the application is we added one question. Um, so our application should be uh, pretty, pretty easy to get through. Um, we do, want to know the uh, some details about the accessibility of your program services. So this is a change that I feel pretty strongly about, um, that uh, we'd like to know and have you kind of map out how a member of the public becomes a client of your services. Um, not necessarily only focusing on what has to happen to them to qualify for your services, but what resources do they have to have? Do they need to have transportation in order to get to your facility and then they can receive services? Do they need to have a reliable phone and a reliable callback number in order to you know, do an intake process for your services? Really want you to name uh, what the client needs to do in order to access your services. So that is a new question that we have on the application. And so that's just a heads up on that. And then we also, um, are asking folks to use the SMART acronym. I think a lot of us might be familiar with that, uh, but there's gonna be a prompt explicitly in the application spelling out the SMART acronym and asking you to please do your best to follow that in regards to your program's outcomes. So the SMART acronym, if we're less familiar with it, is having an outcome that is specific, measurable, achievable, uh, realistic, and time sensitive. Um, I also would like for us to be mindful um, and it's in the application as well, to have to make sure our outcomes are outcomes of the program doing the work and not necessarily an outcome of having received the funds. And so uh, what tends to happen is, or what can happen is that we, we read outcome and we, we think, oh, well, the outcome of my program receiving these funds is that I'll be able to send all these employees to do this work, right? Well, employees doing the work would be an input, right? The number of people impacted would be the outcome. And so when you're listing your numbers and your measurables, we want you to be really mindful that you're using the SMART acronym and that your outcome is an outcome of the work of your program being done. None of that can get confusing. And then uh, just an update on evaluation. The uh, last year, our evaluations focused on target population, number of people served and the fiscal health of the organization. So these are still important considerations that we'll be um, evaluating programs under. Um, we'll also be looking at accessibility of services, uh, like I'd mentioned, and then the use of evidence-based practice um, in this year's applications and just the efficacy of, uh, of your program's activities and whether they're in alignment with the outcomes that 
that your program suggests that they'll achieve. And then the next slide we have is going over some important dates. So the application is currently open. It launched on Thursday, June 13th. Uh, it's the last week. And so the next major milestone is going to be our grant deadline, which is August 15th. Um, we just have you know, eight weeks to apply for that. And then um, we'll be doing our evaluations on our end. Um, we do a staff evaluation and we have board committees do an evaluation. And of course, we have our final board uh, makes their, or our, our board makes their final approval. And so notification of awards will take place um, in mid December of 2024. And that's when we'll get checks sent out to those that we award for the grant period of 2025. And then um, the expectation for grantees is that midway through that year, sometime between May and July, is when we will uh, do a site visit, which is typically less than an hour. It's me going out there, me, sometimes one of our board members will go too, and uh, doing relationship building, learning more about the program, checking in about outcomes, uh, what are you noticing about the program, um, just kind of uh, checking in, doing a visit that way. And then our interim report is similar to that, and that's a report that, that the uh, grantee will provide mid-year. Um, and this year, it's a pretty short report. Um, next year, I anticipate it'll also be pretty short and, and just really to the point. What are you noticing about your program? Are you on track to achieve your outcomes? Um, just using that as a really great communication tool, provide some transparency about uh, stewardship of those dollars. And then our final report deadline is going to be January 2026. That would be the full, you have the full year to um, meet your outcomes or at least collect data on them and then share about that at the end of January 2026 for 2025. And with that, we're going to go ahead and switch over to the actual online application. So I want to introduce Megan Hardwick Hayes, who will do a great job of walking us through the format of the application and how to access it. And then we'll have plenty of time for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. I am the executive assistant in the office, so I'm the one that does all the technology stuff, which I'm sure all of you can recognize that. So I'm going to walk you through the application. Give me a quick second. I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the screen share and I'm going to start a new one so that way we can actually look at the application um, itself and the different processes, how you can find it, all of that great information. So give me a quick second. All right, so the application can be found on our website and our website is theresearchfoundationkc.org. And this is our homepage of our website. And when it first pops up, sometimes if you start clicking on things and nothing happens, you have to wait for like a little pop-up to be like, hey, join our email list. So just know if you start clicking around and things aren't working, just wait a couple of seconds, take a deep breath, take a drink of coffee and um, a little green pop-up box will pop up. So on our website, you can find the application in about three different spots, or you can, and the first one is you should, you can go up here and just search community grants. And you can see it's kind of the first one that pops up here. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. And this is going to be our community grants page is going to pop up right here. So this is where all the information is about our community grants. So you can always start up here and search in the search tab. You can also scroll down on our website and there is a button right here that says receive funding, submit your community grants application for a 2025 grant cycle. And you can click here and learn more. It takes you to the exact same page. Now on this page, there are a couple different spots of information. I believe all of you have been on this page because this is where you went to register for today's session. So on this page, there's some updates that have happened since our community grant portal has opened. So here is a button right here and this header image that says apply here. This is where you can click to link to the application as well. 
This is also a great website for all the information that Kate has won over and Cynthia has won over about um, our application process, eligibility requirements, info grant meeting. This is also where the recording of today's session will be placed. And then also some great frequently asked questions. So if you have any questions, um, this would be a great spot to start to look at all the different questions and see if there's any of these that answer what you're asking before you reach out to Kate. But also don't worry about if you need to reach out, that's why we're here. Um, there's also an important dates tab where you can look and see all the different important dates that she just went over. So up here on this page, if you scroll back up to the top and click on application process, this is this details the application process. And so you can either click here on this link to create or return to an existing account. And our software that we use for our grant cycle is called Grant Interface or Foundant. They go by the same name. Um, so you may already have a Grant Interface or Foundant account. So you can either like log into your account or create a new account using that link, or you can click this apply here button as well. It all takes you to the same spot, which is really great, um, but it just has a different wording. So we're gonna go ahead and let's say you have, you already have an account um, with Found It and Great Interface. What you're gonna do is click this button. This will open up and you're gonna enter your information here and then you're gonna log on. Now, for instance, if you don't have an account yet and you need to create an account, we're going to go ahead and click the Create a New Account button. And then this will load. And it's just like creating any account for anything. You're going to create, you're going to enter your organization, organization's information, the EIA number, website, all the basic information. And once you fill this information out, the user information will pop down. And after you get done with that, the executive officer question, additional officers, and then creating a password for yourself. So this is where you can enter all that information. I know it's a little bit of detail up front, but the nice thing is this pulls in information into your application and also pulls in information from your EIN, EIN number. So if you have a candid profile, that'll pull in as well. So it's just, it's a spot where you gotta put a little work up front and then you'll get your account. What will happen next is you will receive an email saying, hey, yay, you've created an account. Here, ver click to verify, and then you can log in and you can go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to log on and look at what it looks like on the back end side. Now, if you ever have an issue with your password or your username or you've forgotten it or God forbid somebody leaves your organization that had that information, you can always reach out to um, Kate and she will be that person that can um, reassign that user to you or get a password reset taken care of. So we're happy to help with that process. So if you need help with that along the way, please let me know. So the this is where you're going to see your dashboard. Now you can see I have active requests and historical requests. Historical requests are from last year or previous applications that you've submitted. So you can see this one was our application from last year. It's what I used during this session last year. So um, you can see I actually um, the application status stayed as draft. And then I actually this decision was it was abandoned because we're not applying for a grant. But this is also a really um, great place to look at things. So if you wanted to view your application from last year, if you did apply, you could click view application and then the grant application will pull up with all of your answers from last year, which is a great resource. All right. And then if we want to go back, we're just going to click this little home button. And now it says your active requests. So you can click here. You can there, there would be a search box to search community grants program application. So if you don't see the community grants pulled up right here, um, you can always search for it and it'll pop up. And then you can um, click on the application itself. Now in the application, let's let it load. Perfect. You'll see information at the top of the screen that has the applicant information and your organization inf information. So for instance, if you're taking over somebody's um, found an account or grant interface account and you want to edit it to your information, you can go ahead and edit that information here. 
um, if you need to update any information, if there's something has changed in the organization, you can also update that as well here. Now going across the top, this is um, request tab that shows you your status of your application. So it says like right now, mine's in draft mode. And, um, and then it also says the last date modified. So this is really nice to know when was the last time I worked on it, especially if you have multiple people logging in and working on an application, you can kind of keep track of that and see when it was last modified. And then also you can also click here to see their edits of the application. The next tab is going to be your document section. So this is where you're going to have all of your attachments or uploads are going to be listed here. So this would be a great spot for you um, to quickly look and see if there's if you needed to update your budget or needed to update your, your listing listing of officers. You can look at that here without having to scroll all the way through the application, which is really nice. Now moving down the screen, you see there's an application packet. Now this is um, this is going to be everything that you've entered into this application. So you can print a PDF application of everything you filled in. So this is a great tool, um, this button uh, to proof it before you submit to print off a copy of all your answers and have your team look over it before you're done. Um, now, if you're on the start end, the question list is a blank list of the application. It's a blank application. It's actually the handout that you all have in the chat module and you'll receive. Um, but this is where you could print that off. So if you wanted to print it off and divvy it up between your team and highlight the different sections people are working on, or if you just want to like be able to get your mindset um, for the information you need, I like to use sticky notes and highlighters to be able to see, okay, this is a section I need to work on first. Um, so this is a great spot to do that. So question list is blank, application packet is what you've you've submitted. All right, so then we're gonna, um, I'm gonna show you the actual application. So this, the application has several different sections, very similar to last year. We have organization information, and this really just talks about the very first is a reminder. Hey, this is our process. This is the eligibility. These are our focus areas. These are support types. And then you enter your organization's information, website, Facebook, social media, your founded, mission statement, organization history, geography, ge geography that we serve. So, and you can see in these boxes, like some are text boxes um, that you're going to enter a date into. Some actually have character limits. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so you can see, because this might be a little small on your screen. So give me a second. Okay. So on, on these text boxes, there's character limits, and that's something to keep your eye out for. So characters in the grant interface platform include letters, spaces, punctuation. So it includes everything. So when you're typing up your responses, just keep that in mind and it'll count things down for you. So you will see like it'll it'll count down all the characteristics for you. We did have a couple of people last year that had some issues with like hidden characters and they're like, hey, I know, like I went to Word and they say I have uh, like 14 and 1495 characters, but it's showing I have over 1500. What do I do? There are some tools that Grant Interface provided us to remove hidden characters. So if you're having that issue running into it multiple times, please just reach out to Cater myself and we'll get that figured out for you. There's, there's a nice little website you can paste things into that will remove those hidden characters, but it doesn't happen for a ton of people. But, or you can just type it up in Word. Um, that's something that our or our um, organization does a lot with grant proposals is type it up in Word, copy um, plain text, and then paste it over into the application. That usually helps solve some of those problems. But if you're having an issue with it, please reach out. And then, um, so you're just going to enter that basic information. Now we're going to move on to the community grants um, program details. So this section just reminds you that you have to submit the application online. And we are not allowed to accept your PDF application as a submission. It has to come through this portal. Um, so that way we can review them all in the same time. 
Now, if you wish to save a PDF, just like I said earlier, you can click that save application packet. And then when you are done and ready to go, you can submit your application, but you can save it at any time and come back and work on it. So this is not a one and done process. And also questions, again, if you're in the middle of the application, you're like, who am I supposed to email? That information is right here. So that way, you're if you're in the application and you don't have to find an email, it's just all right here. So if you have a question or have an issue, please reach out to Kate or myself and we'll get you, we'll get you all taken care of. All right, the grant contact information. This is going to be the person that we, the main person that we're going to contact when Kate has questions. When we're reviewing the application and we have a question or we're missing something or we're trying to get a question answered from our board, this is going to be the person, the main person that we're going to contact for those questions. So go ahead and put whoever's going to be that right person to receive that information right there. And then the executive director in their email right here. The next one is um, program information. So this is kind of really the heart of what Kate was talking about. So you get to select two different kinds of support, program support or general operating, and then put your project name. So if you were going to do a program, that's pretty easy. You just put the name of the program here. Now, if you are going to do general operating, you would put the Research Foundation General Operating. So your organization, General Operating. And that just helps us quickly identify which you're, what you're doing. Because it'll show at the very top of your application what your program name is. And so we know whether you're doing operating or program. So it doesn't change our specifications or anything. It just helps bring that to our attention very quickly. And then your requested amount. So keep in mind that most grants um, are between the ranges of 25 to 50,000. So um, put your amount requested there. And then total pro program expense. So this is gonna be what you need for that funding period for this program or for your general operating support for that funding period. So make sure you put those total expenses there. The next section is priority alignment. And you can see here, we have put some definitions of the um, different priorities for you again, so that way you can read through them. And you will have to select one. This is different from last year, so there's a little drop down era, a drop down bar, and you have to select one of these. So that's something to spend a little time with these definitions, like Kate, uh, Kate said. And then if you have any questions, please reach out to her. And then this is a start date for your program or your operating. So if you're doing a program, when it starts, and then if you're doing operating, when does your fiscal year start? And I know for a lot of nonprofits, their fiscal years are June through July. So just make sure you enter that information, but our grant period is for the year of 2025. And then end date, of course. And the program description is actually a box that we use quite often when referencing all of our applications. So please make sure you provide a brief, and I'm gonna, I wish I could like underline brief, a brief um, one to three sentence summary of your program or organization that re you're requesting support. Because this is going to be the um, description that we're gonna use when at the top of all of our summaries for everything. So it'd be really great for you to really Work some hard with some wordsmithing and do one to three sentences about who your organization is or what your program is that you're requesting support. And just like your, your, your little elevator speech going up. Um, so that way, that's something that we can reference and use quite often. Then population served. Let's scroll down here just a second. All right, population served. So this is a two-part question. So please make sure that you answer both A and B. So A, please provide a demographic breakdown of who this program will serve and then the details about this population. So please make sure that you read this entire instructions before you start filling this out and answer that question completely. And then share the typical pathway for how a member of the public becomes a client receiving your programs and service. Please be specific. 
So this is where you're going to really try to be as detailed per, uh, as possible as someone from the public becomes a client that's receiving your services and what that process entails. And so make sure you please answer A and B. You have 4,000 characters to do that. So that's a good chunk of, of words to be able to do that. But please make sure. And then the next one is the breakdown of where your entire organization serves. So this is where people, where your people reside that you serve. So this is where you're going to enter numbers. So you're going to enter um, numbers in each one of these. Now, if you don't serve anybody in independence, put zero. If you serve people in Raytown, you know, just put whatever you, whoever you're serving, estimate that information. You should have your reports from last year of who you served. Now, if it's a brand new program, do your best to estimate who, what that population and where they're going to be coming from. And make sure you specify that um, in your application somewhere. But these are estimates we're learning about who our target population is for the this program. But at the bottom of the screen, it's going to go ahead and add everything up for you so you know your total. And then you're going to select your data period. So um, if it's at last fiscal year this data is coming from, or is this projected for this cycle. Next is community need. What problem facing Jackson County residents does your program or organization address? So make sure you specify this. This is also a one to three sentence um, question. So make sure that you be as brief as you can because it becomes very wordy and sometimes people actually like repeat things multiple times. So just be as concise as you possibly can of what community need that you are addressing with your program or organization. Then your proposed solution. So this is where you're gonna talk about the problem and what intervention you're doing or how you're solving this problem and how much, how often, how long. Um, so please provide as much information here as you can about your evidence base, your promising practices, how you are serving these people and solving this problem. The next section is goals and ant anticipated outcomes. How will you know your program or organization's activities are working? So please provide at least two outcomes. So we need at least two, two outcomes for this section. And um, like Kate was talking about the SMART goals, this is where you're gonna enter those. Make sure they are measurable outcomes um, for us because these are going to be the outcomes that are gonna be listed in your grant agreement that you are gonna sign and agree to if you will receive funding. And then this section is a great section. It's additional information. So this is a spot where you can share whatever you would like that you would think that would help our board and our committees get a better glimpse of who your organization is and what you're doing in the community. So this is a little like brag area. So if there's anything you want to brag about or share about that thinks that we haven't covered in the other questions above, this is just a really great spot to include that. And our last major section is attachments. So this is where you're going to attach all of the documents. Now, something to keep in mind, I highly recommend that you upload PDFs um, and a tool that I use, um, and you have limits on sizes of PDFs. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, I use Adobe um, Acrobat PDF compressor. So it's a free, so you can just search like Adobe PDF compressor. It's a free tool and you just select your file, compress it to the size that you want, and it'll make it as small as it can. And then you can and download it and upload it again. So like if you're, if you're having an issue with file size, I would highly recommend that tool or any PDF editor. But um, the attachments include the IRS determination letter. So you have to be a 501c3 to apply. So this should be an easy, easy attachment for you. Your current board members and listings, so make sure you have their name, their position, professional affiliation, and breakdown of any demographics, or your current budget for the fiscal, for the current fiscal year, program budget. So now if you're um, applying for organizational funds, you would just attach that budget twice because all of these spots that are asterisked are required. So if you were doing applying for program funding, you would do your organized budget and your program budget here. Then the IRS Form 990, 
This is what needs to be uploaded, and this is what you submit to the IRS. Now, if you're a smaller organization that doesn't submit the full 990, please, you still have to submit a like small abbreviated form or something back from the IRS saying that you do not have to submit one. So just submit that letter um, to this website. And an audit is optional, but highly recommended because this is, gives us a great idea of your financial policies and where you are. Then these are financial statements. So you'll have to combine these files because there's only one spot to upload a file. So you combine your financial statement of position or balance sheet and statement of acti activities or profit or loss. Just combine those and attach. And then your organization lo logo. Please provide us a high quality logo because this will be utilized if the Research Foundation publicizes um, grant partnerships online. So this is what we're going to use to, um, if you are awarded grants, we're going to highlight you or use this in any marketing or social media moving forward. So this is a great spot. And then finally, this is another brag point. So you can up to, uh, upload an initial photo. So if there's an event or something that um, you would like to attach here that really kind of gives you a, a visual glimpse to our organization of what you all do, this would be a great spot to put that. And we're at the end. Now you're just certifying. So I certify that the information on the application is true to the best of my knowledge. And then when you are done, you can either save the application or submit. Um, once you submit, that's a hard submit, so you'll be you'll be done. Like you can't change or edit anything, but save. You can always come back and edit. And the final final button that I'm going to go over is the abandoned request. So if the cat walks across your keyboard, or you get into this application, and you're like, hey, I don't think we're a good fit for this grant. You can always abandon the request. It doesn't hurt you. Like, or if you accidentally click abandon request, you can start a new request over. Um, it just shows on our end that it was abandoned. Um, but that's it. So that is the application. I'm gonna go ahead and stop screen share and I'm going to turn it over for questions. And you're welcome to put your questions in the chat. I know I've already answered a few uh, that folks sent as direct messages that were excellent questions. So we put some up. Hi, I have a question for organizations that um, are fairly new. So they have the 501c3, they have the board, they have the IRS letter, those type of things, but they're just now getting started and don't have an IRS 990. You're okay with just having a letter? That I wanted to make sure I was clear. Yeah, if the organization has already, like is a 501c3 and they're not pending, they're not right. pending that status. Right. Yeah. Five one one C three, but started at the beginning of the year. Yeah. I've had have had um some awards come through for funding, but mm -hmm. wanted to see if this would be an okay thing for for this organization to apply for. So thank you. Yes, we do look at the nine nineties uh quite a bit to assess fiscal health. Um, but not having one, we might just have other questions or there'll be uh, a spot in the application for um for you to, uh, like the spot where you might normally put a 990, you may just need to put other information to help assess physical health. All right. Kate, okay, you thank another? you. Oh, sorry, Netta. Um, we have another question from Jenny. Is the grant awarded all at once or are organizations reimbursed on a monthly basis? That's a great question. It is uh, awarded all at once. So it's one check that will be uh, cut, created uh, at the end of the year and sent in the mail at the end of December so that you can get started on um, applying those funds in January. All right, anyone else have any questions? I don't see any more in the chat. Oh, um, this one's from Jesse. Are programmatic requests more likely to be funded at a higher amount than general operating? That is an excellent question. Um, I don't know that they'd be more likely to be funded at a higher amount. Um, it's possible that they might be more likely to be considered for funding at all. I mean, we do fund both programmatic and general operating, like you shared. Um, so what's really what it really is going to come down to, sorry if there's background noise, is uh, those outcomes. 
and whether because um, program specific outcomes tend to be just a lot more measurable for us to check in about how that program's doing. Are they being good stewards of those dollars? Did did what we set out to fund with our priority areas did that actual was that actually achieved? Right. But whereas with general operating, it can all go you know to an organization's bottom line, and we're just really not sure whether uh, whether what we had set out to do with our mission was attained. Um, so I, that's an excellent question. I, I don't know that it it means it's more likely to be funded at a higher amount. We we do certainly have some preference for programmatic requests, um, but that's not to say don't apply for general operating, especially if you find that it meets the criteria with uh, with your organization meeting over fifty percent of its activities with one of our funding focus areas. Thanks for asking that one, Cynthia. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that answer? No, I think you summed it up quite well. All right. I don't see any other questions. I'm waiting. Every time I say that, somebody else pops one in. So, And I've gotten some direct message questions, but I might follow up via email with. So if you sent me a direct message question and it was a long one, I'll send you an email. I, I do find that the virtual ones, as opposed to our in-person meetings, like most uh, virtual meetings, it seems like um, they go much faster than uh, when we're all in person. So mm -hmm. certainly appreciate everyone's time. And if there's no more questions, we're going to kind of give you back a little bit more of your time and certainly reach out to Kate if you do end up having additional questions or you want to run something by her. She is our Director of Community Grants, and she would be your first line of approach. All right. Thank you all. Have a great day.